question? Well, not so much how it's delivered, but it's how it's received. So that if there's somebody that says they have an issue with the way it's delivered, they have a good right to come to us and say, we have an issue with the way it's delivered. Okay, the question is really about the complaint process, not necessarily the complaint resolution process. Let me share that with you, though, because when you talk about the complaint resolution process or program, that is actually something different. When earlier in an earlier session, I spoke about complaint investigations. That's done by my staff. That's based on allegations of possible violations. There's also another unit within DCA that does third-party mediation. That's where we don't suspect there's violations, but you have an unhappy student. They didn't teach me well enough. I can't find a job. They didn't refund it properly. These kinds of things that don't look like they're, or they refunded it, but I really need more. These things that might possibly take, be successful in mediation, we forward those over to the complaint um, mediation program. Um, we call them C CRP. But the complaint process itself, how you're notified, I think what, what I'll go over is what the process is. When we get a complaint, typically from a student, that's our most common complaints, we will review it, look at what their allegations are, or when I say allegations, they could be complaining about who knows what. You know, the teacher looked at me cross-eyed, whatever it is, but out of all of the information they share with us, what are potential or possible violations? We look at those, we call those the allegations. Then we'll be working with the, the student or the complainant to clarify, to make sure we understand what they're saying, provide us the information. Then at that point, if it's very clear to us that it's not a violation, it'll probably end there. But if we're not sure, we need more information, then at that point we'll contact the schools. And depending on the situation, sometimes we may just send a letter, sometimes we'll pay a visit, Sometimes, depending on the situation, it may be an unannounced visit. This is all happening on the investigation side. If you were in that earlier session, again, compliance versus investigation. When you get that letter, in most instances, it's going to be a letter. And it's letting you know that we received a complaint. Here's what they're alleging. And we're only going to bring forward the potential violations that, it's, that that letter is alleging. Please provide us information. For instance, uh, the teachers were not qualified in this class. They didn't know what they were doing, or we had one instance, a teacher admittedly had a criminal background, and he brags about it and talks about how to get beat the system and still get a license, those types of things. So then we're going to check with the school, share with us. Uh, depending on how discreet it needs to be, share with us your documentation, your faculty files for a certain time period or a certain teacher, or we may come in person if we want to see it in person. It really, every case is unique on how we're going to handle it, so I can't give a rock-solid answer on how it's done, but that's really where it is. And what we're doing is we're not... We're not prejudging and saying, oh, bad school, bad, wow, they have did this horrible things, because we understand that these complaints are coming in with emotion behind them. They, they feel they've been wronged. So we, we understand that. But we do want to ensure that we're not seeing violations. So we want to gather the evidence. That's our lingo, evidence. Um, we gather the evidence and then we evaluate it and make our determinations. And it may be more than once that we'll be contacting you. And then afterwards, once we made the determination, if, if there is no violation, we cannot detect a violation, you'll be so notified, you'll get a letter and it will let you know that, that, that it's closed, the matter has been closed for that complaint. The complainant will also be notified. They're not always happy, but there's no violation, there's no violation. We're, in, we're here really to process, to enforce what, what the laws that are out there so we, we don't go above and beyond. Hopefully that answers the question, does it? Okay, good, thank you. Does anyone have any other questions for Joanne? Okay, we've got one down here, Joanne.
Attorney General's office is our attorney. They represent us in matters that we want to take formal discipline on. So it's typically cases that we are seeking revocation, either revocation of an educational program or revocation of approval to operate. But it could also be a license denial. They, they've come in for approval to operate and we denied them. And they want to appeal that. It could be that the, um, they were so far off base with their meeting our, the requirements to operate that even if they come in to appeal, we, we don't want to deal with that on an informal basis. We want to move forward with a hearing and let a judge hear it for us. And that's what the Attorney General's office does for us. They help us with our case. We take it forward to an administrative law hearing, a judge. They help and they pro provide a proposed decision on the matter. It's the Administrative Procedures Act that oversees all of this. And so again, following the processes for that. Typical cases that you'll see over there. Uh, let's see, what do we have now? Well, in fact, instead of my telling you, you just go to our website. We post those. If, if the pleading has already come out, it's posted. Um, if the pleading has not come out yet, you're not going to know because it's not ready for public disclosure. Okay. Does that answer the question? Okay. For that one, we, we also never disclose if we have an active investigation going on. So while we get a lot of media inquiry as to are we investigating the school, are we not investigating, or what is the challenge, until we have something finalized, we don't disclose that. And we also do not disclose complaint information. Because we do understand that the nature of complaints is all over the map from the teacher looking at that guy to, you know, the, the son that broke that thing in the school. So no, it, we, we do not disclose that. Any other questions? Yes. We have rules of speech for you. <laughs> hey, next year I don't have to talk. I'm getting step aerobics here. <laughs> okay, how soon after we receive the complaint we contact the school? Was that the question? Okay, it depends. Sometimes you'll never hear from us. If you've never heard from us, it doesn't mean we didn't receive a complaint against your school. It could just be that it was determined before um, we even had to go to the school that the complaint really didn't address anything that could be a possible violation of our law. But typically, it, it's going to vary, vary on the, the amount of time it takes us to gather the information from the student, the backlog that we have, the, what we need from the school, whether it needs to be in person or in a letter. So I can't really give a definitive answer, but um, I can tell you we are backlogged right now. We aren't meeting our goals. Uh, and completing our investigations, but my goal, our goals are to complete our investigations in six months time. So completion means that at the end of six months, and of course there's going to be some that are not going to meet that because they're very complex, but at the end of six months we're ready to determine whether it's closure without violation or we're going to refer it for a citation or we're going to refer it for formal disciplinary action. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's thank uh, Joanne and Karen for their participation this morning. <laughs> They're going to be around a little bit after the uh, conference concludes, so if you have some specific questions you'd like to tap them on the shoulder about, they'd be happy to spend a few minutes with you to address those questions.